Greetings and welcome to the fifth installment, the fifth series of videos of Fun with Dashcams. Uh, we are moving away from single camera systems and uh, everything that's associated with that. And we are moving into, uh, to me, a more interesting type of camera system, which is uh, the multiple camera, say uh, two camera, front plus back or front plus whatever. Um, this is the basis of uh, what we will eventually have in the future, which will be a multi-camera car system integrated, uh, three, four, possibly more, uh, like for a fleet. Um, that is the ultimate goal that I plan to pursue to build uh, in a friend's car, and we're still uh, looking at that, but it's kind of cost prohibitive at this time, but we will eventually do it. So the basis of that, though, is right here because... Um, uh, like I says, you know, we got these little two-eyed monsters. We have at least two cameras, front plus rear. Uh, so the models we're going to be using as examples are very similar, but yet not. Uh, I uh, did actually own both of these. Um, I do have this, the S3000, which we will be using as a sample in this presentation. Um, I will be including videos um, as part of this series for the F90G. Um, this one I actually liked a little bit over the S3, uh, S3000. They each have their own strengths and weaknesses. Um, I ended up giving this one to my brother as a uh, gift. Um, and we talk, We will also briefly discuss different variations, especially of the S3000, to show you uh, the flexibility of a system like this. Uh, we'll, we will basically cover the features that are kind of in common to them. We will be discussing the kind of the good of most of, of mostly of the S3000, but some of the F90G. We'll be discussing some of the bad points, and we'll be discussing some of the not so ugly. So uh, I don't since I don't have the F90G, it's in my brother's car now. Uh, I have a picture to kind of show you what it is. So you have the camera and it's got six buttons on each side, each one does things. Uh, maybe at a future date we can uh, get a look at his system. Uh, what's interesting though is you have uh, two types of mounts. You have a suction mount if you're just gonna mount the front camera only, uh, but that's not the reason why you buy a system like this because it's got a second camera. Uh, so the fact that you have this uh, uh, flat mount means that you can adhere it directly. So this actually has 3M tape on the back of it, so suction mount, temporary. This makes it much more permanent. So you make a decision and now you're uh, committed to it. And it's actually a superior mount because it um, makes it basically part of the front windscreen. So it prevents a lot of the jostling and coming loose that some of these have. One thing you'll also notice is this is that clip we were uh, talking about, we've seen before, uh, slides in. That's pretty common on most dash cams nowadays, but they do come in different sizes, but typically they're pretty universal. Um, so this mount is going to pretty much adhere to that. So it's a pretty standard mount, pr pretty standard type of clip option. Uh, this is a little bit different. A lot of mounts that use this will uh, oftentimes include uh, one of these. This is interesting because it gives you screw holes. You could actually bolt this thing to something if you really wanted to. So you can make it really permanent. Uh, looking up, and this is an example of it, if it had uh, that mount. Uh, what's interesting about this is that this mount is the same size and uses that same cross bolt to uh, tighten it down, and this is uh, ratcheted, uh, has notches in it. Uh, for this, uh, this is actually the GPS antenna, but it's also uh, functions as a mount. So it makes this unit integrated. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, it also, uh, because it has expanded capability, because it has uh, two cameras there, of course, uh, we have a rear-facing camera, but this camera can be mounted uh, different places if you so desire. But typically it's going to go in the back window uh, to record not only what's in front of the vehicle, but now what's happening behind the vehicle. We're no longer concerned about recording inside the vehicle and trying to winnow out a little bit of detail through the back window. Uh, no, we're uh, going to have to run some extra wires. Uh, typically they come with a fort between 14 and 20 feet, uh, you know, three and uh, five and six meters, three and six meters, something like that. So between uh, 10 and 20 feet, really, uh, but more likely 15 to 20 feet uh, to get to this back camera. Now they have different variations of these cameras. Uh, the S3000 has a different dongle than this. Ultimately it leads into a, a two-banded or a three-banded AV type jack, a, a 2.5 mil connection, like a stereo jack. Uh, but then it has this little uh, connector here uh, because this is a pretty standard camera. Uh, you see this little model on a lot of uh, uh, DVRs that have a rear-facing camera. 
So, but this can be mixed and matched because of that connector. The camera, the internals, the CCD is pretty much the same. Uh, of course, has our 12 volt power, uh, has, uh, like I said, the different mounting options, uh, has a driver disc, which we'll discuss in a little bit, and has a USB cable. So, to give you a practical for uh, the S3000, uh, first off, let's talk about the mount. Uh, the mount for the S3000 is a suction type mount and it's a very large suction and very very strong uh, I never saw it fall off well I did it I had one problem when it got really really hot but as long as your wind is clean and keep the mount clean it usually gives a very 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 strong uh, suction to the window you have a uh, one two and three degrees of uh, freedom on this particular mount so it can be mounted and uh, the clip, what's nice is, and we'll talk about that in a second, is it actually lets you uh, mount either this way or this way. Very reminiscent of the X3000 and maybe a few other things you've seen before. So we have our mount. This is our, uh, our actual, actually our cradle with our mount. That, like I said, and it has a quick release feature. It's, I thought that's really nice. Uh, you're probably not going to take this out very often, but in the event that you need to, it's very handy. It's probably the easiest one I've ever seen to extract. So this of course is the 3000 connections on the side and we'll cover those in a little bit. It's a very, very long USB cable, USB power to 12 volt accessory. Actually, it did come with an AV cable, because, and we'll cover that in a second, so you can plug it into a TV like we've discussed previously. Actually, it did come with a remote power, which I'm not exactly sure what it is, because uh, unfortunately, the directions that I received are terrible. We'll discuss that in a second. But the main reason we want to discuss this is because this camera also has a suction mount with a rear view camera. So now we're talking about a multi-camera system, as, as in all the cameras uh, going into a single head unit, hence a true DVR. I also wanted to show you an uh, interesting thing about this camera. This, the camera actually comes in two main varieties. Um, and I found these online to show you. I mean, the, it's actually referred to, I have the S3000, it's referred to as the S3000A. Um, here is a clone, I mean, it's not a clone, it's the same thing, but slightly different types of cameras. They're essentially the same in that they will end up giving the same resolution. This is an HD camera. It does record in uh, 720p at 30 frames. Uh, but these cameras themselves are not. These cameras actually give you a resolution of... Uh, uh, 720 by 480. So some people kind of may call that 480p. That's really not. 480p is kind of a standard that was baked up uh, to fit between VGA and HD. Uh, so it used to be called, just like you had the D1, that was like a 704 by 480. Uh, then they later came out with a, a 16 by 9 kind of ratio uh, uh, called a uh, uh, 480p, and you see that on YouTube, and it's about 858, 856 pixels by 480 pixels. And uh, so it's it's not true. See, sometimes these will be sold, and it'll say that they're 48p cameras, but they're actually not. These are 740 by 480. So it's kind of like that, uh, similar to 480p, but it's you know it's chopped off a little bit. So you don't have a true 16 by 9. Um, but they do. But they are both based on all winter. Uh, but these cameras. What's interesting about this is because you have this ability to uh, move these cameras anywhere you want. Uh, this means you can mount this in any vehicle you want and pull it out anytime you want because these are all suction mounts. Whereas these are not. You know, these are intended to be screwed in or usually with a 3M tab to be adhered. But the nice thing about this is because you ha you can uh, notice how the size of that. It's only about that big. Now these, of course, are a little clunkier, whereas these are, you know, just the, about the size of this with the little mount bracket and the, and the lens. So you have the option with a system like this to actually hide the head unit somewhere else. Put this, you know, not on the dash, not on the mirror, somewhere else. You can actually mount these elsewhere. 
that's what's interesting about this. Um, like I said, you're trading off uh, the uh, resolution for a more flexible mounting option. But I just want to show you that, that you know, this is called the Iconbit DVR Q2. Uh, this is the S3000A. It's the same unit, just slightly different cameras, sold by different companies. So, like, like I had discussed, uh, it's starting to look more like a true DVR. In fact, it is. It's a multiple camera unit going into a single head unit and recording on common media. So you got multiple channels going, uh, being stored on uh, the same media, but they're separate channels. You know, they're not recorded as, as like a picture on picture. They're not kludging the images together and then recording that. They're actually separate video streams. So it requires a more intense uh, computation, uh, a more, a more uh, powerful processor and a more specialized processor to handle multiple video streams and to be able to encode, encode multiple video streams into a single data file or into multiple data files, excuse me. So um, both of these cameras that I just talked about are based on the all winter chipset. There are many flavors and uh, you'll, uh, you'll see this come up when you start talking about uh, multi-headed units, uh, or, I mean a multi-camera units, uh, is that the all winter is used in a, in probably the majority of them, but a considerable portion of them. All winter is a big player in this space. Uh, Amberella is more of a, uh, they do sell some very nice cameras, but most of them are not dual uh, camera systems. I've only seen one mention ever of an Amberella that was a dual camera system. Uh, they have all the features that were associate that we associate with dash cams. Automatic record on power, auto power off with delay, uh, built-in battery or some type of uh, electric storage, yada yada yada. There's a slight difference, uh, there's two major differences between these and we'll cover those, but uh, again we have uh, two cameras, primarily for the front and rear of the vehicle. Uh, both of these, because they are based on the all winner, record videos in H.264 in an MOV format. So uh, almost any all winner is going to record in MOV. Um, both of these have parking uh, or motion detect mode. Uh, remember we discussed that before. Uh, but the F90G uh, has a G sensor, which by inference is that the S3000 does not which uh, was kind of interesting um, because you know a lot of people don't like to use it and apparently the designers for this decided that they didn't need that because most people turn it off. Um, what's nice about the 3000 is it has a 3.5 inch screen. So just a breakdown of uh, the main features between these two cameras, uh, I mean between these two systems. Uh, very much the same with the guts, very much uh, the same with the external cameras and their capabilities, and here's a breakdown to show you what I mean. Uh, the uh, main camera in the 3000, uh, not the 3000A, is a 120 uh, degree fixed. Uh, uh, it's not, you know, it can't be moved, so it's a, no fi it's a fixed pitch. It cannot be uh, rotated, cannot be uh, moved around. Uh, whereas, uh, and the uh, back camera, of course, can be tilted, could be mounted. Uh, for the uh, 3000A, you know, depending upon your option, you can mount it anywhere, and uh, your adjustment is based upon where you put it, you know, and how you put it. <laughs> so, um, 90 degrees on both of those cameras because all these all these aftermarket cameras they're pretty generic uh, in whatever flavor it's just the casing that's different pretty much our 90 degrees uh, view angle uh, for the FG uh, F90G its front camera is actually 140 provides a wider field of view it also has uh, just like these a 90 degree but it's a solid mount once you mount it and it uh, has about 90 degrees uh, on a tilt uh, I think you can turn a little bit more but pretty much 90 degrees so you can get from level down to uh, the bottom of the road uh, at your bumper, you know. Uh, none of them have LED. Uh, I'm not sure, but I believe that the S3000 does not have an IR filter, just judging by the way the videos look in certain lighting conditions, and I can show you sample that in the sample videos uh, in this series. Uh, the F90G does. Uh, it's a little bit clearer video, uh, a little bit uh, not as, uh, washed out as these, when I say washed out I don't mean that they're crap, uh, but you kind of notice uh, that if that there is some extra color saturation in certain uh, hues, 
under certain conditions. And I don't see that with the F90G, so I don't believe it has an IR sensor, an IR filter in the front. Uh, auto screen off, yes, everything. Uh, what's nice about this is the 3.5 inch screen. It's actually quite suitable for reviewing video. Uh, this is a 2.7 diagonal. Uh, it's actually pretty nice. Not not quite as nice as these, you know, as you saw. You know, 3.5 inches. It almost looks like a G, like a small GPS. And actually, that's what I think it's intended to look like. Uh, and as far as GPS, these don't have it. Just like they don't have the G sensor, this guy does. So it's a good multiple mounting options, and really for both cameras, because we have suction mounts or solid mounts, we have the option to mount it just like any other forward-facing camera. However, with the rear-facing camera, we have uh, you know we have a bunch of cable we will have to run through. But the benefit of it is we have an extra camera to do with what we want, so we can. Uh, put that on the windscreen, we can put that on the dashboard as a second camera looking back into the cab if we wanted to, stick it on the back window. Um, I have another idea for a special situation for a friend that I'm thinking of doing, uh, you know, where we can have a hidden head unit like you saw with the 3000A, you know, have two cameras and we can hide the main unit. Uh, we have quote unquote 360 degrees protection all the way around, uh, around the front of the car, the back of the car. We have a larger screen on, on these, so uh, that's very nice uh, compared to a lot of other uh, single cameras. Like I have one of the cameras that I actually use in my car day to day has a little teeny tiny screen. It's about an inch and a half diagonal. It's, you can't, it's used for setup and really nothing more and for positioning. Can't really be used for re review. Uh, these both have very good daytime recording, as I said. S3000 looks a little purple in some situations, and I think that's because it's missing an IR filter, and I think they did it on purpose. Um, HD recording is the big plus. Uh, we're now we're getting out of cheap cameras. We did already see a very nice HD camera, 1080p. Uh, but these, as a general rule, with uh, the all winners, typically are going to be HD cameras. Um, they're not there. You're not talking about the crap $20 cameras. Uh, you're talking about you know it's like I said, it's not expensive, but in the 80, 80 to 100 and up range. And uh, we're actually going to see another example of an all winner. It's going to pop up in uh, the Series 6 video for a very unique, um, I kind of think is pretty cool anyways, uh, option for dash cams, which uh, is not as common, not near as common. So max of 720p at 30 frames on the 3000. FG, uh, F90G gives us uh, 1080. I think this is slightly interpolated. I'm not sure, but I get the feeling uh, when I review video. Uh, it is. It does give you a good picture, but uh, some of the detail once you push it up to uh, 1080p at 30 frames, kind of gives me the feeling that it might be doing a little bit of interpolating. But it still gives you a very nice picture uh, given the light levels. Uh, what's the bad? There's no software that comes with the S3000, so absolutely no playback software playback. But I think it was intended to be a very simple system to use, and we'll go through the menus, and you'll understand in a second. Uh, whereas the uh, F90G. Uh, the software is uninstallable. It's terrible. It, uh, it breaks itself in trying to install it. I don't know if too many people that have been able to do it. There's a lot of matriculations, and I just say to hell with that. But we have a uh, something to the rescue here. There's no GPS on the S3000A, which I kind of don't like. Well, on either of them, the 3000 or any of the 3000s. Uh, which, but then again, that's a unique feature in this price range. Uh, you typically you're 120, 130 dollars and up, uh, or at least. Uh, when these cameras first came out, before you start talking about GPS features, so the fact that I got a uh, this for one hundred eight dollars uh, off of Amazon, and it had GPS, had two cameras, had ten eighty p, so it's claimed in the front, uh, more cables, but I thought that was pretty unique. That's why I went for it. Uh, but remember, uh, all this stuff when we add all these cameras and add the GPS, we get more cables size you know look at this this is not discreet at all but then again some of the other ones we looked at weren't very small either but some of these cameras uh but it's just a big giant square thing i mean it looks like a gps or a cell phone or something it's where you mount it it's definitely going to be noticeable unless you uh, get really creative uh you can't get a 1080p out of the front from the s3000 but that's okay we still got hd um now this i uh do want to uh bring up uh, is uh, well, oh yeah, the other niggling thing about the F90G uh, has a front LED. It's not an IR uh, LED. It's just a regular visible LED. I think it's intended for the camera mode. The problem is, is when you randomly hit buttons uh, on the front unit, 
uh, it may act while it's in uh, record mode, it'll actually turn that stupid thing on and you may not even realize it, but it'll sit there, it'll shine off the window and it'll sometimes cause problems in your video. Uh, it's easily turned on. I'm, I, to this day, don't know how I ever did turn it on. I would just fiddle around until eventually I turn it off. But then, and there's no way to disable it. You can turn it off in the menu, but then the key combination operation will turn it back on. So that's an, kind of a niggling problem with this. I wish they, I wish they just get rid of it. Um, you, uh, there's a, here's a beef uh, that I did have when I was researching cameras is why can't I get HD in both the front and the back? So I can get 1080p in the front. Why can't I get HD in the back? Uh, it's all about trade-offs. Think about the GDR35D. Remember that? We uh, had mentioned it. It is a uh, two dual camera unit, a uh, dual camera DVR, and it will record 1080p out its front, but if you add that back camera, it automatically goes to a 720p and a 720p. So you're still getting HD, but you're not getting the full 1080p. I mean, you've seen it's a very nice 1080p picture uh, from that camera, from its optics and its CCD, but uh, it has to do with uh, how much data, you know, HD quality video is a lot of data and trying to push two HD streams to that SD card will overwhelm it. So that's the trade-off here. You know, you can find 1080p cameras, but it's going to be very rare to find a, if not impossible, I think I've seen one so far uh, that hit the market in the last several months, uh, was a 1080p front with a 720p rear. Uh, how they did that, they had to get real creative with the codec, probably had to do a, a change in the frame rate. You could probably get away with that by dropping frame rates, cut it in half, and allow that to be given to uh, bandwidth for uh, the 720 in the back camera. But I, that's the only way I can think of considering you know how much data you're actually pushing that SD. It gets to the point where your SD drops. It's the same problem you have with any dash cam using a slower camera than is recommended. Uh, using a class four forget it. Uh, class 6 is starting to get up to those speeds. Class 10 is recommended. Class 10 or better is recommended for any dash cam really. Uh, so, uh, but even at the rates that uh, the, the U1 cards from SanDisk or a, a Class 10 will give you, uh, you're still going to run into a bottleneck. So that's the trade-off. They're not so ugly, but these cameras cost about 80 to 100 bucks. You know, you can you price them online, look at the different options. Uh, the more you spend, the more little gizmos you get in the box. But for the most part, they're between 80 and 100 bucks. Um, you now have the ability of doing front and back uh, video, uh, and it's very important. You know, very important if you've ever been rear-ended that you actually do have a video. So, especially when it's a hit and run, uh, there is a possibility, never a guarantee, but a possibility that you might be able to catch. Uh, the license plate, or at least, the, at least the make and model of the car, and now that you have what's going on from the back, now you can review it from the front, and you can track that video. I mean, track that vehicle through the video. So if you end up needing to follow them down or anything, you can follow them, and you have two cameras that are recording, so you can always review back in case you need to find out where they may have gone. Uh, but you have an accurate recording of not just front but rear, uh, and it's creative mounting options. Uh, you may not want to use that second camera. For a back facing camera, you may not have that ability. You can say you drive a box fan. A second camera would be useful for something else, like, you know, hang up in the corner for security, uh, hang somewhere else. I always thought it'd be interesting is to put on the instrument cluster. And the reason is, uh, for a, you know, say the S3000, you know, doesn't have GPS, but if I were to say get a second camera and mount, uh, get that second camera and mount it here, not necessarily this one, but an aftermarket, the smaller type, and uh, put it in front of the instrument cluster. Uh, while I'm recording video from the front, I'm recording everything going on in the instrument cluster, where I'm signaling, where I'm not, um, speeding up, slowing down, uh, gear shifting, all those kind of things, odometer reading. Uh, it's pretty much just as good. main reason for GPS is so you can ultimately get a speed indication plus position. So I can't get my position, but I can get that through visual cues in the front camera. And now I actually have a better thing because it shows whether I'm using all my instruments, have my lights on, the high beams on, all that kind of stuff. That would actually be kind of interesting. And that's actually an option that's used in a multi-camera DVR uh, that may have three or four or five cameras, is one of the cameras may actually be trained on the instrument cluster or some type of an instrument display to show what's going on in the vehicle, you know, as far as vehicle operations. Do I have my headlights on? Am I signaling? Uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, both of these, uh, even though the software uh, situation is not good, both of them have native, have native playback. 
and that is, uh, and, or, and you have this Saving Grace, which is a program that a guy uh, started developing a while back, and he ended up uh, making it open source. Well, not open source per se, but a community effort. It's Registrator Viewer. It's uh, very popular. It handles most of the major chipsets. Uh, and uh, what's nice about it is it allows you to take a video plus a GPS. Now, it only does one video uh, channel at a time. So if you have a two-headed unit, uh, of course, you would have to uh, trade off you know, which video uh, file with which GPS log you have. Uh, with the All Winners, uh, they may or may not encode uh, video data into the uh, video stream, I mean the GPS data into the video stream, but they do push out a, a GPS log. Uh, so you'll have a log file. I think uh, the, usually it's a dot .map file, but you can take that with the video file, feed it to him, and he will reconstruct your journey. He'll give you a Google Maps display or a Bing display or something like that, or open streets, I can't remember, but it will give you a map display showing your journey, uh, plus your speed, plus uh, uh, G-sensor data if that's available. So it's pretty handy. It's a, a bit complicated, uh, a bit busy in its interface, but you should check it out. Okay, so taking a quick tour, uh, I did mention about, oh yeah, about GPS power. You know, as uh, just looking back, first off, uh, the back of the, of the unit has the camera, uh, and as we saw, 120 degrees with a reset button here, and the speaker's right here. And I think that might actually be the microphone right there, because I don't see anything on the front. Um, our five, our six buttons uh, that you typically see right here, power, up, down, uh, record or, or uh, select, mode and menu. Uh, so uh, looking on this side, uh, you notice we have an AVN port here. If this were a 3000A, it would have another uh, plug right there, right next to it. So that'd be camera A and camera B. I mean, uh, camera A is right here, and this would be camera B. So if it were the 3000A, it'd be camera A, a port right there, and then this would be camera B. Uh, we have our uh, power and AB out. Remember, it's uh, 2.5 mil, uh, two band, to uh, composite. So this is uh, gonna be standard resolution. Uh, what's nice is this is USB data plus power. Of course, SD card, on off button. I have no idea what this is. Uh, it's something, uh, I don't know what it is. But uh, it has kind of an interesting feature. So first off, when we power it up, it actually gives us an option uh, of do you want to go into camera mode, like uh, basically DVR mode, and just still continue recording? Do you want to go into PC camera mode? Or do you want to go into USB mode? The reason why I thought this is interesting is because this is why I'm a real big advocate of using USB power. Uh, you can run a single cable like I have, a uh, mini USB, USB extender, put it to one of those uh, USB to uh, power ports, uh, power adapter, uh, uh, port adapters into the 12 volt accessory port in your car. Then you can turn right around and take a laptop in your car, swing that cable out of the uh, 12 volt adapter and plug it right in and then you can uh, have your DVR go into USB disk mode and start pulling the uh, all that shit right off the camera without having to monkey around with pulling out an SD card without having to uh, dismount the camera and then plug it in somewhere to view. This is why I think this this uh, feature is very nice especially for a unit that you're going to be mounting and probably in a per somewhat permanent way. So it's it's kind of nice. So anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead and go into uh, camera mode and just get a view of the UI as you can see it's recording. Come on. Oh yeah, and a uh, LED indicator here for when it's come on, when it's turned on. If it'll let me, it may be out of power. It was running kind of low, so. Uh, but anyways, that little light there's a uh, blue LED. You should be able to see in there. It lets you know that the unit's powered up. So this is the main screen, front and back, and we can. Uh, so the up button here will actually turn uh, microphone on and off. Uh, the down button actually toggles between our two channels that we're viewing. Um, it's just trading back camera front, front back. You know, that's all it's doing. I just don't have a camera plugged in, so I don't have a video stream. But I can. <laughs> this is why my videos are so long. One take and go. Uh, so we want to go into record mode so we're going back in and now suddenly we have a second channel 
Hey, how's that? And that's the back camera. Swing back around, we have the front camera. That's what's really nice about this is, given the size of it, I think if, if you're creative, you might actually be able to use this almost. And in fact, I think it is intended to be used. Notice the size of this. This is our back camera. And notice how it reduces. Uh, and now we have more of a more view of uh, the screen. I think that they do that because this is intended to be used also as a backup camera. So it's a proxy for a backup camera, plus it's recording everything going on. So kind of cool. Um, frames, uh, we're recording in uh, 720p at 30 frames. Our, uh, we also have a uh, parking motor motion detection turned on, one of the features. Uh, and uh, our exposure value, auto exposure, is set to three. Uh, our mic is currently turned on. Uh, of course, like you saw, this is uh, the, the, ch the alternate channel, depending on come on. what you want to do. Yes, the screen, the screen does have auto off. Uh, date time stamp and uh, current record time. And of course, we have a time stamp on both the front and back uh, videos. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go into the menu. Uh, this is a little bit, this is way different from a normal all winter menu. Most of the all winter menus kind of look the same and they're very confusing if you're not used to them. Uh, someone did a really good job to make this easy and I think that's why this was real popular for a while in uh, China and probably Taiwan. I had to order this from Taiwan. Uh, and, I, and I think it's uh, gained a little bit of traction uh, somewhere else, some other places, but it's very rare to see this in the U.S. if, if you've ever seen it. I'm, I'm the only one that I'm aware of that even has ever had one uh, that I know of. Come on. Uh, anyways, going. Uh, basic setup is very basic. Uh, it really dumbs it down, kind of like how you saw that Garmin. So uh, we have basically format the card, date, time set, volume, uh, what mode for our TV, North America or Europe. Watermark is the timestamp. Uh, of course, backlight time, we can set that up to a few minutes. Uh, our frequency uh, set back to factory default. And we actually have a second menu, which is the record menu. And this is where we get into the vitals of the camera. So we have an option of either doing a 720 or a standard VGA. Record time uh, can be down to a couple minutes. We have one, uh, one, two, and five, or off, and it's just continuous record. This is a loop recording. I typically keep mine at two to three. Uh, we can actually change frame rate of 15 or 30, you know, to save space. Uh, 15 frames per second will typically get you there. Uh, of course, uh, audio record on or off, but that's also controlled by a button. Uh, auto detect literally means uh, it's, uh, it's checking motion. Uh, picture in picture, so that display we had, we can turn that off. Uh, record mode, either front or both cameras. They like say here, front, back, or double. <laughs> so you can actually record E1 or the other or both. Uh, that's what I thought was kind of interesting for this. Very similar to the dash, to those taxi cams. Uh, boot record, that's uh, record on power. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, come on. Um, don't have anything else really to say about it. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, I'll be posting the uh, sample videos of daytime and nighttime.